it's Sunday again. Oh, it just takes, seems to take ages to get here on Wednesday. Here it just seems it wasn't yesterday since I welcomed you into the life of Jaden and the Jaden Show. Today, without any exception, is going to be as special as all of them put together, as they are every week, because I'm going to Utah to meet Lethem, singer, songwriter, musician, Jedi, and clown. What a combination, kids. <laughs> We're going to speak to him in a minute. However, I think before we go chat, we need to see one of his videos because the guy is super, super cool. This is called New Life. This is Lethem. He said shotgun on to my right Took a hard left, left it all behind Oh, oh, never looking back With the new sun right in the distance Forget the past, yeah, we'll live right this instant Oh, you know I have no regrets Because one, two, three, oh Let's start over again Oh, you know oh, oh, I made it all this for time We'll find a new city New heights New friends Oh, it's alright Oh, you know You've seen him, you've heard him. Let's go and meet him this week's very special guest on the Jaden Show, the amazing Lethal. Lethal, welcome to the Jaden Show. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you, Jaden. How's your day been? Very wonderful. Thank you. Even better now. I'm going to, it's Utah you're in, right? Yeah, Utah, United All States. All of a sudden, I'm in Utah chatting to an incredibly talented young man. So life is good. Life is great. Life. Thank you. You're too kind. <laughs> no, it's true. How did it all start? When did Little Lethem start singing and doing your thing? Oh, God. Uh, probably when I was like six, actually. Six years old. 
is when I uh, first started, I was put into theater camps, musicals, choirs, everything, which is hilarious because I don't come from a musical family. Okay. Um, it's just me. <laughs> I just suck Did they do sport. that to get rid of you? Or had you just had you been showing kind of signs of being a star, darling, long before that? No, they wanted to put me in sports and I just sucked. And so they uh <laughs> they said we gotta find you something to do. So that just kind of stuck, the the music and performing, all of that. Um and then I started taking piano lessons when I was 10, 10 years old. And started writing my own songs by the time I was 12. Oh, okay, man. That's really cool. Have you recorded any of those 12-year-old songs? Oh, God. Yes. When I was 14, I recorded my first EP. And it's out there somewhere on CD. <laughs> I have no clue where it is. It's probably in my parents' basement. Um, just chilling there, hiding in the dark. Thank God. No one needs to hear that. I remember living in Canada for a little bit. In, in 1991 I think it was so I was 18 and I decided to make like this gospel album so it was called The Distance and it was just me and my friend on a double cassette player because I'm old and literally with a backing track CD and Jaden singing next to it and I recorded this album darling my friend Maria sketched all the album covers <laughs> hey DIY is the best way to go hey it would probably be it would probably be quite funky now I mean back in the day it was like really but now it'd probably be like, wow, retro, dude. Yeah, very retro. <laughs> so what type of, so you recorded your first EP. So what was the style of your first launch into the industry? Like into the industry, like the first like real launch? Well, I guess your first EP was on some level. So what was the style of that music? Were you like, is it in pop, grunge, like nursery rhyme? I mean, how, what, what was, what were you doing? Very black eyed peas, cheesy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. We've come a long way. <laughs> but good choices as well, though. I mean, and every single song you made was written by you. Yes. All, right. all done. All you, need to, all. you need to find this and get it up on SoundCloud. Oh, God, no, please. You never <laughs> know. It could be the making. Like, someone just might go, oh, that's so black eyed peas. I love it. I'll put it on my uh, Patreon, and you pay five hundred dollars US. And <laughs> <laughs> not a bad idea either, quite frankly. So you've gone from twelve years old, well, fourteen years old. Your major first EP. That's pretty impressive. Where did it take you from there? Uh, it took me uh, going in. I mean, I had a really normal, average, you know, American childhood and you know, teenage experience. High school, I was involved in some choirs. Uh, I grew up Mormon, actually, um, and was involved in a few different uh, religious choirs um, and performances. And then uh, after I left the, the church, um, I started getting involved in like the punk and emo scene in okay. Salt Lake City, Utah. And got really involved there started doing like screaming and then eventually that all ended high school ended right and then that's and then i kind of pushed my way into the industry i'm like i gotta find what fits um so i found a very specific sound that could be um that was unique to me mm -hmm. but it was it was commercial it was sellable okay i could, I could really push it um and could you put that sound into a genre? Was it staying in the kind of emo punk vibe or, or, or was it kind of? Um, I've, kind of taken, I've kind of taken influences from all phases of my musical life. And I just kind of was just throwing stuff out there to see what would stick for me. So I have a song called New Life that's very EDM, very pop, very progressive. Um, We've actually just played that before this interview. Oh, you did? We did indeed. So it was absolutely. Well, I'm glad you like that one. That one's, yeah, that one's probably my most pop sounding song. Um, and then I kind of pulled in some of that emo um, background with my song Cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just growing up doing choir and musical theater and stuff, I wrote a song called Winter Snow and just threw that out into the world to see what would happen. And it ended up being one of my most popular songs, which is really funny because that is not the direction I'm going in anymore. I feel like I've 
finally found my little my little pocket right of where i am sonically um and i'm really excited about all of my new songs and new content that's going to be that's going to be coming out this year uh, okay. on. well i was going to say like what are you doing at the moment but then i guess this is the answer right you're working on on new sounds new more videos um, I'm going to be working on a few different projects. We'll see what's going on. I have a pretty tight budget at the moment, so I'm working. You're a musician, mate. That's normal. I'm working. I'm working in these little boundaries of no money at all. No <laughs> money at all. No money at all. Well, I do, to have, my I do have friends. Yeah, I do have some friends that I work with, and and they've helped out a lot and given. Uh, they've gave me some pretty good deals. Um, but you know, everyone's got to get paid at the end of the day. So I'm just saving my coin, <laughs> saving my coin every day so I can make more stuff. Lovely man. Do you, I mean, obviously you're a, a talented musician. Are you a producer as well? Do you work from home? Do you record from home? Are you able to do the majority of your work yourself? I do quite a bit of it myself, but I also have worked with a variety of producers and engineers. Um, some based here in Utah, some based in, uh, Canada, okay. some based on the East coast, like New York and Massachusetts, and then some on the West coast, uh, California, like LA, I've worked with a whole variety of, of engineers, producers, and other artists. Wow. Amazing, man. So when did it go from kind of like being something you like to do to, oh my God, people are taking me seriously. And actually this is something I really want to do now. And this is the, this is, I'm not going to go and work in a bank. I'm going to concentrate on my music. Uh, it was 2021. I quit my job and started doing music full time. I said, I'm just going to have to make it work. I said, if there's no other option available, then I have no choice but to make it work. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I just, I was working on music and content creation, maybe 80 to 90 hours a week, just recording song after song after song. And not every song has seen the light of day. So part-time um, then? <laughs> part-time, yeah. <laughs> no, I, think the most, I don't think I, people know what goes into, you know, like... As far as they're concerned, you're a singer on a video on YouTube or you're a host on a video on YouTube or whatever. I don't think people really realize. I mean, when I was working a full time job, I mean, I'm still working a full time job, two, three full time jobs at the moment. Um, so when, when I was back in London doing my thing, I was doing a 12 hour shift and then I was coming home and doing another seven to nine hours on trying to get likes on YouTube, trying to get likes on Twitter, trying to get retweets, follows, subscriptions. It just doesn't stop. I remember like falling asleep and thinking, oh my God, I've got three hours before I've got to get to work. I've just got to take a quick nap because I had a single coming out or something was happening and I really had to get followers like in that month. So people don't realize that actually it's more than a full-time job. Oh, it's more. It's it's your whole life. Yeah, completely. They don't, they don't realize, uh, not they, most people don't realize that this is what we eat, breathe, mm -hmm. dream of. I mean, I, I can't even tell you how many nights I've skipped sleep just to work. Yeah. No, Sam, I hear you. I feel that vibe, mate. Do you ever regret giving up your full-time job? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> just for the money, just for the money. But, uh no, to be completely honest, though, no, no, this is what I was meant to do. This is what I was meant to do. And so I think if I, if I didn't do what I did, God, three years ago, mm -hmm. I don't even know if I would be making music, period. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, for me, it was all or nothing. It, and I, that, mm, it's a little, I don't know how to describe that. There's like hobby music making, which is valid and reasonable and very well done pretty often. They go out, they make maybe a record, they go play some gigs, stay local, you know, and they have fun doing it. Mm -hmm. and that's that's exactly where I started, but I just have been craving more and more and more. And I'm like, I, I want to have a family one day. I want to be able to support that family doing what I love. Mm -hmm. And how's it looking at the moment? I mean, I'm married. <laughs> and, well, you're and already halfway there. 
halfway there. And so it's working a little bit. Uh, granted, he he also works quite a bit. He's a school teacher. Okay. So he's, he's kind of the bread breadwinner of the. Of do, you the think, do you think you could be doing what you're doing if he wasn't supporting it? Without his support, no. Uh, no, I don't think I'd right. be able to do anything. Yeah. I mean, I mean that financially and also creatively. He's so supportive. He's been to, he hasn't missed a show in uh -oh. three years. Not a single one. He comes to every show. He's always running merch for me, you know, driving me and my equipment around. Wow. Oh, we're, cool. we're getting ready to go on tour this summer. Um, and he might be coming with and being our, our bus driver. So we'll see. <laughs> Keep it in the family. Keep it in the family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You need kids quick because you need some ticket sales people and one exactly. get your flyers. Put them all to work. Amen to that, brother. Sounds bloody wonderful. <laughs> so who are you? I mean, the influences you had back in the day musically, are they still now as you as you've seen your music, your persona, and your direction evolve and change a little. Has your taste changed? I mean, like the people that you would kick back and listen to then, are they still the same people now? No, yes and no. I get this question. I've gotten this question a few times of like, who's inspired me and what has um, influenced me, right? And the, it sounds like an egotistical answer, but it's it's me. Mm -hmm. I I'm the inspiration for myself mm -hmm. right i go and i listen to all these artists um i mean i i have a vast taste i've listened everything from you know pop rock emo i've listened to some really weird stuff too um <laughs> just some like a uh, hyper pop all i i've listened to everything i feel like i've listened to everything okay and i've kind of just learned from each genre and what it can bring you know country music always has i mean every song does but country music really relies on storytelling right mm -hmm. pop music relies on familiarity yeah. emo music relies on expressing maybe harsher emotions um and then you have dance music and then i just kind of take that all and i just and everything that resonates and put it into a melting pot right yeah. and and yeah. whatever that's comes them. out whatever comes out that's lethal and that's that's every song. That's every song. And I've taken my own lived experiences, stories from other people, and then stories I just make up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, I put myself in this little world and, and that's where I'm able to write and create. And what's the reaction of others that are hearing your music now? Uh, some of um, it's mostly positive. Some people are like, what the, f <laughs> what the hell is that? I don't know what kind of words are allowed you on this show. Up. It's cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be like, what the fuck was that? And I'm just like, oh, you, I'm just experimenting right now. But now that I got that reaction, I know not to do that again. Cause it, I'm, the people I'm, that were kind of following you in the beginning, are they still, are they still with you now? Are they still following and supporting your music? And have they commented on how your, your style, how your vibe has changed? No. Um, when I first started this journey, um, Back when I was in high school, I was still, um, I grew up in a very religious home mm -hmm. and the religion just did not vibe with me. I have, I have nothing against it or people that follow it or whatever, I think to each their own, but it just wasn't vibing with me. And so um, when I moved on to create my own style of music and not be involved with that religious circle, a lot of the people that followed me um and we're supporting that journey they kind of just stuck with with old lethem mm -hmm. um before i was even lethem they kind of yeah. just stuck there and then kept kept all the old stuff and then you know after i came out after i started exploring um this industry i gained a i started from the bottom all all brand new all scratch um and then i i just i built this following of mostly lgbt kids and teens and, and young adults uh i just i wanted to give people like me something they could listen to and feel safe with and and just jam out to there's not a lot of lgbt representation in the music industry it's very select 
um, I wanted to give something a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. I hope to keep doing that for the rest of my career. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. So what's coming up for you apart from a world tour? Is it a world tour that you're going on? Uh, I'm just, I'm no, it's just uh, West Coast, United States. That's quite cool. I've never yeah. been. It'll just be a week. But lovely, though. So we'll be doing that. I'm working on a record, uh, record number two. My first one came out in 2022. And it's done pretty well. This new one, I've partnered with a few other producers and engineers to really uh, deliver something special. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not going to be as long as my first one. I think my first one was seven tracks. This one is going to be four, maybe five. Okay. Uh, but it's a whole new direction for and, me. And when's that due to come out? Beats me. <laughs> When it comes out, Jaden. When it comes out, yeah. I'm I'm working. It's this one's very expensive. It, okay. It's expensive, and so I just have to just keep grinding get and done, so, get a bit done, get a bit done till it's ready. Yeah. Little sections at a time. That's excited, no man. I'm excited, yeah. And then I just had a new song come out last week, which is kind of a taste of where I'm going. Called uh, that. What's it called? Boys. Boys. Okay. I think I've heard this. Is it on, is it on your YouTube? Uh, it should be on like a YouTube topic page. I'll upload it to my own channel soon enough. Uh, but it's available on all streaming platforms. Fantastic. I think I've heard it. But I'm playing X's on the way out because I really like that as well. Perfect. That one's a fun one. When 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 did you when did you make that? X's? That was the second song I recorded in 2021. Okay. Yeah. I was just hanging out with my producer and I was like, let's come up with something just like stupid. <laughs> and he just started playing this groove um, on the bass guitar and we looped it and then we threw some drums over it. And then I was just coming up with little melodies here and there. And then I just threw some lyrics together and, and it that was that. <laughs> And it works really well. Amazing, man. It worked, it worked well. There's I'll, I'll get questions. What does the song mean? It doesn't mean anything. I, <laughs> I just threw words together. It was fun to make. It was just fun to make. Yeah. Sweet, man. So where can people find you? On so, um, well, I know that your music's available on. Now, you're on Bandcamp, SoundCloud, yes, Spotify, Apple. Yes, all of those, as as you mentioned as well. No, not 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 yet on Patreon. Oh, you're, you're getting on. Okay, you're yeah. getting there. Okay, so where can people find you on social media? Uh, at Lethem Official. Okay, and that's everywhere. everywhere. Same same tag every platform. Bloody wonderful! What would you say has been is the most random song you have? Not on your personal playlist, on your listening playlist. Something that could not be further away from your vibe you're like raw man that's weird no there's this really really dumb song called Susie's crabgrass <laughs> don't listen to it don't yes. do it <laughs> people at home i dare you not to now we just said yeah, that, that you not to listen how to that can you song? not Susie's crabgrass oh it's complete shit man <laughs> Okay. But I love it. I love that song. I love it. You know, music is all subjective, <laughs> and that song is just one of the worst things I've ever heard. But I absolutely love it. I'm gonna go and check that out as soon as this show's finished. Yeah, I don't know the artist. I'd have to look them up. I'm I sure think... there's not going to be many songs called Susie's Crabgrass. To be fair, oh, so no in, way. in the search, I'm pretty sure it will come up straight away. Yeah, you'll find it. You'll know it when you hear it. <laughs> I'll be I'll be messaging you on Instagram later, mate, saying what? Yeah, yes, yeah, send me a DM. <laughs> you might hate me. <laughs> no, I'll never hate anyone for their choice of music, but I might have to question your sanity. <laughs> yeah, that. that. <laughs> mate, Lethem, thank you so much for being part of my show. You are an absolute star bar. 
Thank you for having me. It's a bloody pleasure. It's a bloody pleasure. Like I said, we haven't finished with you yet because the lovely people at home are going to get a chance to listen to X's before we end the show. But people at home, this is him. Where is he? This side. This. Oh, I always get my fingers mixed. He's there. No, I'm there. Right. <laughs> Donald Dyspraxic. What's that all about? Fucking hell. There he is. You love him. You've already listened to him. You want to find him. So go and check him out at Lethem Official, right? Yes. Everywhere. Go and Google that boy. Go and show him some love. Go and check him out. Lethem, please come back and talk to me when your next album is launched. Will do. Thanks for having me. It's been be great. Sick. I super, 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 super love your music and you're going to do amazing. And I'm very excited to catch up with you to hear your news soon. Well. We will be seeing each other soon enough. Maybe even a collaboration one day in the next 20 years. That would be cool. If you're ever writing a song, you think, oh, a bit of a Brandy and Monica, but it'll be Lethem and Jaden. I can do this. Hey. I'm available for weddings, funerals, and bar mitzvahs. Hey, so am I. Sweet. Okay, we're teaming up. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> Lethem, thank you so much. Have a wonderful new week, and we'll catch up with you again soon. All right. See we'll you later, see buddy. Bye-bye. How wonderful was he? I am so chuffed that he came to spend time with me this Sunday. I also hope that when you get a couple of minutes spare, you will go and have him down on his social media platforms. You will find him on SoundCloud, Bandcamp, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, all the regular music download and streaming websites. Go and check him out. Go and share brothers to love. Go and support. While you are there, sorry, I just finished eating a dairy milk chocolate. It's it's just like, how much more perfect can today get? So while you're there, you can also come and find me on my social media platforms as well. Come and say hi on them. It would be lovely to um, say hello to you there. Check me out on what I'm all about and what I'm doing at the moment. Thank you so much for viewing. Lethem, thank you so much for being part of my show. I'm going to leave you with a song and a video that's actually the title of it. We've all been there. We've all got them. It's called Exes. This is Lethem. I'm going to wish you a wonderful new week. I'm going to say goodbye to you now. I hope you have a wonderful one, a productive one, a beautiful one, a safe one. Stay beautiful. And I will catch you on the Jaden Show next Sunday with another wonderful person. Take care. Bye-bye.